Hey, what is going on, Military Journeyman? In this video, I want to actually show you what it's like getting qualified in the Coast Guard because when you join the service, uh, you might be thinking like, oh, you know, I hate college, don't want to study, uh, you know, I just kind of want to go do work. Uh, but part of doing the work means having to study a lot. That was one of the things that I uh, first didn't really understand before joining uh, the military, the Coast Guard. And it wasn't until I got to my first unit that I realized, oh wow, there's actually a lot of studying that you need to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip my camera around and uh, show you exactly what it is that you need to study. All right, so um, this was my first unit in the Coast Guard Stamp Kenosha. Um, I actually don't think that there is a Stamp Kenosha anymore. Um, they, I think that they were one of the last uh, station and small boats a uh, small boat station and an ant uh, basically combined. So an ant is like a, uh, they service uh, lights and um, uh, waterways. They do buoys and stuff like that. So that was actually the second unit I went to. I went to an ant after I was at the stamp. Um, but this is the watch standard qualification guide. So this was the first qualification that I had to get when I joined uh, the Coast Guard. So just kind of walking through what that looks like. Um, so you have this thing called a, a PQ, PQS. So this was me back E2. Um, and when I got to the unit, they handed me this binder and they said, hey, you have to get qualified um, for uh, this, you know, the communication. And then I had uh, this qualification, the RBS 25 and this qualification, the RBM 45. So you can see like, you know, general stant Kenosha information. So like when you learn the stuff, 0101 Kenosha, then you could get that signed off. And all of these are different things that you have to do, like how to respond to a bomb threat, responding to an electrical power outage. And this is all like practical information stuff. So um, there's actually references to all of these things so um, a lot of times they'll have like instructions on like what are the things that you have to memorize in order to get this sign off um, so report and record weather observations you know you have to memorize what the phone numbers are what the address and this is all relevant important information uh, at this particular unit because you're at a small boat station so if someone asks you like you know if you're part of the the comms watch so you're basically on the radio for the unit you have to be like hey you know this is um you know this is our phone number this is our address if you don't know it then you know first responders may have issues because if you're picking somebody up at the you know on the water and then you have to bring them into the, the unit you have to tell them like exactly where uh where to go um and with this qualification, the, the most challenging part was uh, just memorizing the whole uh, AOR. So general AOR information, you know, state the names of potential landmarks and then the relation, state the location of all the boat ramps, fueling stations, haul out stations. Um, so these are like, this was a lot, a lot to um, actually memorize. Um, yeah, and then, you know, uh, operate public address system. So you can see this This is a little falling apart now because I, uh, I didn't have the little little ring things. But um, And then this is in relation to all of these sign-offs. So I said, again, you know, you have different uh, tasks, task numbers there. Um, you would go over here and you'd actually be able to find, like, what the task is. So I would go into the binder here and I would basically find whatever the task ordinance is, you know, so, um, yeah, so it'd be like, you know, adjust the demonstrate channel 16 selection, you know, state the minimum of five radio co communications. And it'd have like a reference so you can go and find another manual to get the reference and then uh you know make all transmissions and responses in accordance with blah 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 and then when you completed it they would sign this off 
And then when they sign this off, they would go back to your PQS over here and they would sign off that particular thing. So like this one is 0206. So we'd go down to 0206 and try to find it. I can't find it. And uh, they also had, this being a, a small boat station, they had unit specific, so that's why they would put Ken, Kenosha. Uh, this was more general, uh, 0206, just general things. So you had like your general watch standard and then your unit specific watch standard. And you'd just have to go through and you'd have to get all of the sign offs. And then they even had little quizzes for you to do. So it was nice at this unit because you know, they, there was like more resources to be able to study. Um, so this was my first unit and kind of what it was, a, it was a lot. It was, it was honestly a lot of information, um, with the comms watch. But then when you get to like the boat, the watch, uh, getting qualified on the boat, on the small boat, uh, this one, they give you three months to get qualified. So the Communication watch standard was one month. The boat qualification, boat crew member, was three months. And I believe that the other boat is one month. So once you get your first boat crew qualification, um, that's the most challenging one for you know, uh, being at a small boat station. Once you get qualified on another uh, boat, though, it's much easier. Um, so you can see that you know, I had to get all these different sign-offs, lots of sign-offs. And the text is a lot smaller, like assistant anchoring the boat, you know, identify common nav lights, uh, as a, um, act as a helmsman, you know, operate the electronic charting system, um, you know, helicopter operations, so having to do helo ops, conduct helo ops. Um, so you can see that there, there was a lot of, a lot of different uh, sign-offs. Um, and then this one, you know, because I already did the boat crew sign-offs, um, you know, I only had to do specific types of sign-offs. So these are all the type specific sign-offs that I had to do. So this one, you can see it was a lot, a lot easier, but it was more specific to that particular boat. And that was my boat crew. Yeah. And this is all the boat crew sign-offs. So you can see there's a lot of different sign-offs, lots of sign-offs. And this just kept going. Um, and then this was this was one I was trying to do uh, BTM. So, um, you know, basically being a boarding team member. Uh, so this is where you would board a vessel. So the all of those qualifications was just for you to basically be on the boat uh, and a qualified member to, you know, do tows and stuff like that. This is if you were going to do the law enforcement side. So there was all of these different sign-offs for that um, that you had to get. And these are all the sign-offs. And you can see, successfully complete the unit BTM qualification. That was the last one. I didn't uh, pass my board. Um, and right after that, uh, I ended up going to ASDA school. And if you want to listen about the ASDA school, because whenever I say, oh, I went to ASDA school or rescue swimmer school, they say, hey, so you're a rescue swimmer? No, I'm not, I'm not a rescue swimmer. Um, I have another video uh, talking about that, which you can find on the channel. But um, this is, you know, different types of units do this, these different types of things. Uh, this was all like EPME, so having to study just like general, general knowledge for like when you're trying to advance in the Coast Guard. This was all like the relative information as far as what you needed to memorize. So you, I'm just making this video to kind of show you that just because you join the military doesn't mean that you're not going to be studying. There's, there's a lot of studying. Uh, this is just kind of more general information. And this is all outside of your boot camp. And this was actually when I got to my second unit, uh, Aunt St. Pete. So I had already gotten boat crew qualified. So I was able to operate small boats. So I just had to get a, um, another boat qualification, meaning like, you know, I operated on the 25, 
um, RBS, response boat small. I operated on the 45 RBM, response boat medium. And then I had to do the, um, the 26 Tanby. So this one was very quick to get qualified. You know, just had a few sign-offs that I had to do. And this was, again, this was this unit's qualification process. So you see it's, it's a little bit, looks a little bit different. The way that they lay it out, every unit's going to be different. I had to learn more like Aton specific stuff, you know. And yeah, I hope you guys are finding this helpful. Um, then there's some other qualifications, like having when I got to my second unit, um, you know, chainsaw qualification being able to operate a chainsaw. And then there was another qualification for be, being a cr uh, crewman. So not only did you have to, you know, get qualified on the boat, but then you had to get qualified to be a crew member on the boat. Um, you know, more in line with like, you know, um, bu buoy operations, mooring, Gripping buoys, towing of buoys, boom crane operator. That was another one, having to operate the boom boom crane. Looks like they didn't, didn't sign these ones off, but I was qualified. <clears throat> um, this was all my study material that I made for like BTM, a boarding team member. So this is all the stuff that I, I made and had to study. And then this is more study this is more sign off so more things that you have to get qualified on um this was advancing to third class so you have to get sign offs to advance in the coast guard um you can see different sign offs there um, and then this was when i got to my so I went to ITA school, which again, ITA school, there's a lot of uh, sign-offs and stuff that you have to get. Um, but then when I got to my second unit, this was all the stuff, or my third unit, uh, this was all the stuff that I had to do, you know, to get signed off. Like, you know, um, I had to do EOC systems, so like having to do um, a systems watch standard. Um Nays. I had to get qualified on Nays, which is uh, just basically a watch stander. Um, yeah, lots of lots of different sign offs for different things that you have to study for. Um, network operator, standing the network watch, and yeah, I've this is this is just some of all of the study stuff. Um, so, you know, when you join the Coast Guard, put this back to me, when you join the Coast Guard, you're going to have to study a lot. Um, this is, you know, it's, and it, but it's more practical. So like when you go to college, you're studying a lot more theory, general, unless you go to like a technical college. So you can kind of think of joining the military as joining like a technical college. You go to your unit, you get you know, you do on the job training, um, you get qualified for that specific thing. And then, um, then you can do the job. And then when you go to another unit, let's say you go to another job, let's say you're a BM, a boatswain's mate, and you get qualified. I had, you know, you have all your boat crew qualifications. You're there for four years doing the job. Let's say you go to a cutter, maybe on that cutter, there is a small boat your qualifications from your last unit can transfer over to your next unit. Let's say you go and become a recruiter. Now, all of the things that you did before, you haven't done them in a while. Let's say you're a recruiter for, let's say, four years. If you were previously doing small boat operations, now you go to a recruiting station and you don't do your job for like four years, the next time you go back to your next unit, it's gonna be kind of challenging. Maybe you don't remember a lot of the things, how, it, you know, how things work. Uh, so you might have to get requalified in order to basically say like, hey, you know, I, you know, I meet the standard and I'm able to operate 
uh, my job uh, the same as I did before. So um, this is what the military is. Um, you know, it's really nice when you finally get fully qualified. Um, but until you're fully qualified, meaning like you have all of these certifications, all of the Coast Guard um, tests that you've passed for your specific job, then you can, you know, now you go into more like a supervisory role and you're helping others that are coming into the unit because people are always coming in and leaving. Um, you have to train them and get them qualified. And, you know, maybe you have some other job that you have, like your primary job. Um, so that's that's really how this whole Coast Guard thing works. Um, but yeah, if you have any other questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Hope this was helpful. Until next time, Military Journeyman. Peace out.